Hey y'all, happy Monday. So this week we are digging into um, I Am Called and we'll, we'll move forward most likely in the next day. But I, I, lo I love all of the I Am statements, but this one is probably one of my favorites because it speaks to, um, you know, our past and our future. And it's such a solid reminder that God does not see us by our mistakes or failures. He doesn't call us by those things. He calls us by name. And so we'll kind of refresh today a little bit from where we um, ended on Friday because we started I Am Called on Friday. And so let's just take a, a moment and, and read through their definition. So called is to speak of or address by a specified name, by a specified name. So we looked into the story of Zacchaeus, and Zacchaeus was not a well-loved man and or well-liked man. He was a tax collector who, in that time period, they were cheats, and they could collect taxes. So whatever, whatever belonged to the, the government at that time, they gave to the government, but they could impose whatever tax they wanted to. So anything over and above what was due to the government, they got to keep. So as you can probably imagine, that was cause for um, it's a big temptation to, to be selfish, to be greedy, um, and to collect way more than was required of people. So Zacchaeus was not um, a upright standing community man. And so because of that, you know, he had heard about Jesus. He had heard all of the things that Jesus had done. He had heard um, the way that Jesus loved people. And, you know, he just wanted to see Jesus. So he climbs up in that tree. He can see Jesus coming, but he's out of the way. He's not, you know, in the crowd of people. And Jesus says, he stops, he looks up and says, Hey, Zacchaeus, I'm going to your house today. And Jesus goes to Zacchaeus' house, right? But he doesn't call him, hey, tax collector, or hey, sinner. He doesn't call him by his reputation, his occupation, or mistakes. Jesus called him by his name, Zacchaeus. And who was Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus was an Israelite, one of God's chosen people. He was valuable and known. And that is the same way he calls to us. In spite of our past, he calls us. He doesn't leave us captives. He calls us out of slavery, a captive no more. So the one who created and formed us, the one who designed us to be carriers of his presence, thought that we were worth calling. You are not insignificant. You matter a great deal to the creator of the universe. Um. He calls us in love. There is no condemnation in his calling. There's no regret. There's no browbeating. There is only the voice of goodness. And so I have several scriptures that I want to read. And let's dig in first um, into John chapter 10. Now, John 10 is a familiar passage, and this is where Jesus talks to his followers as the good shepherd. And um, let's go, John 10. He says, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, he who does not enter by the door into the sheepfold but climbs up some other way elsewhere from some other quarter is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The watchman opens the door for this man, and the sheep listen to his voice and heed it. And he calls his own sheep by name and brings them out. That is powerful. So Jesus comes in and he calls his sheep out by name. And that's what he's done for us. When we truly settle down and listen to the voice of love, we can hear him call our name. He calls our name one by one. It's just like, you know, he left the 99 to find the one. He calls to you. 
And it's his goodness. He doesn't call you by mistakes. He doesn't bring condemnation. He calls you by your name. And we're going to pick up here tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.